wanted us to take a few moments today and explore the spiritual dimensions of hope. Now, let us look at, as we always do, you know, what does the published literature say about the word? So today's word is hope. And the published literature says, hope is a desire accompanied by anticipation and expectation. Okay, so one of the literal definitions is hope is a desire accompanied by anticipation or expectation. Now, for some people, hope also means always looking on the bright side and seeing challenges as opportunities. So these are the positive thinkers. So hope is always looking on the bright side and seeing challenges and opportunities. Now, we all know these definitions quite well and we live them. So let's take a different angle. When people speak about hope in a spiritual context, it typically alludes to believing good things will happen with faith in a higher power. Believing good things will happen with faith in a higher power. So now we're taking hope to a new level, okay? So you're taking now a higher power and bringing that power into your material world, into material life. Therefore, they direct their hopes up outward in prayer. <clears throat> in today's insight, we're gonna explore this whole concept a little more because it is such a powerful aspect of our being. Hope is such a powerful aspect of our being that we need to harness it more than we currently do. Now, Today, it's no secret that our world is going through an increasingly challenging time. I need say no more. So today, the power of hope is needed more than it has ever been needed before. So this, we are going to rely on our friendly angels, Cyrus and Luminous today, to explore some of these key spiritual dimensions of hope. So I asked Cyrus to teach us about the spiritual dimension of hope. Now remember, Cyrus, is a very wise angel. He's an angel of wisdom. Luminous is an angel of light. Um, very good humored, good natured, angel of light, always laughing. Cyrus is the angel of wisdom. So Cyrus says that as human beings, hope is the greatest power you all possess. This is because hope relies on the participation of a higher force in your material world. And he says, your material world is filled with events and circumstances, largely created by your material mind. Your material mind's always creating, which comes from a level of the mind, which is one of the lower levels that exist. So your material world and the events that you create are generated from a very low, a lower level of your true intelligence. Now, those of you, he says, who have faith in your creator, whatever that faith may be, and whatever you believe your creator to be, but you have faith, you believe in a source. He says, oh, those of you who have that, you reach out to much higher levels of your being for help and guidance through this material plane. So you reach out to that higher level. And he said, those of you who are too busy to think about the higher level, or don't believe in it at all. He said, they end up, you guys end up living the life of a mouse that runs around in a maze, banging its head on walls in an attempt to find a way forward. So I said, yeah, but that's a bit of a harsh description, isn't it? I said to Cyrus, you know, a mouse banging around a maze on the walls of the maze till it finds a way forward. And he said, all I'm saying is what I see. Well, it's not harsh, it's not good, it's not bad. I'm just telling you what I see. And he said, let me explain to you further. He said, think of your world at night. It is dark, okay? Your world goes dark at night. He says, those of you who have a torch will get by just fine. The rest will find it difficult and bounce around in the darkness. Is that true or not? If you have a torch, you will get by just fine. If you don't have a torch, you're gonna to bang into walls till you find out, find your way. Fair point, I replied. I said to him, look, an important part of human life is having the power of choice. 
So some may choose their path and beliefs one way and others may take an entirely different approach. So it's okay for them to do that. And Cyrus smiled and said, sure. You all have been blessed with an intellect and you have the right to use it the way you wish. Some of you will carry a torch and some of you won't. And he said, so in the end, your choices will determine your experience in that dark room, in that dark place. So I said, okay, since you brought up the torch, tell us a bit more about this torch. You know, what is it? So Luminous looks at, uh, I mean, Cyrus looks at Luminous and goes, you're the angel of light. So this question is yours. And Luminous said, look, as Cyrus said, your material world is filled with events and circumstances that are a product of your human thoughts, which is, I call them material thoughts. You guys live in material thoughts. But he says, when you engage that higher level in your being from the intellect and beyond, you are engaging with your source of creation, your life force, the infinite intelligence. And this, that is using the torch. And he says, when Cyrus says use the torch, he's referring to engaging with the source of your creation or your life force or your infinite intelligence or the light within you. That is what using the torch is because you're engaging with enlightened levels of your being and bringing enlightened thoughts to your material world. That to me, he said, is using your torch. And he said, Hope is in essence, placing your full trust and faith in the higher levels of your being. So hope is placing your full trust and faith in the higher levels of your being, in your source, your creator, your life force. And when you hope, you are asking for an outcome or outcomes in your life through divine intervention. So Luminous says, hope is invocation of divine intervention. Very powerful distinction here. Hope is the invocation of divine intervention. And he said, now let me make two things very importantly clear here. When I say divine, he said, I do not mean divinity as expressed by different religions, which have interpretations of their own. I'm not referring to divinity from that perspective. He said, from my perspective, Divine is a simple reference to the light and intelligence of the creator. So he said, divine is a simple reference to the light and intelligence of our creator. He said, divine in my vocabulary means the most elevated state of your being. That is divine, most elevated state of your being. So he said, hope from this perspective is invocation of divine intervention. Now he said, you've understand, understood the meaning of define. Now he said, let me also clarify what I mean by intervention. He says, I don't use intervention as a word that refers to involvement of an interfering nature. No, on the contrary, he said, I see this intervention more as a power of facilitation. I love that definition of interven intervention. I said, the power of facilitation. And yes, it is a facilitation when divine intervention occurs. So the light or intelligence of your creator facilitates whatever you hope for. Now he said, there is also another important distinction that not all hopes are facilitated the way one envisages them. So if you envisage something and you hope for that to be, it's not necessary that it is facilitated to that end. So why not, I asked. He said, because when you place such a high level of faith or trust in your creator, you submit fully to your creator with the unquestionable knowledge that whatever intervention comes from the creator will be for the best. It's unquestionable when you have that faith. So it will be for the best for you and for everyone in that circumstance or circumstances. And Lumina said, let me share with you the story of the king whose son, the prince, fell off his horse and lost the use of his leg. So the king was really sad because having his son, his heir, 
partially disabled was something really hard for him to accept and it would be for any parent. And he hoped that his son would regain his abilities to walk again. <clears throat> and he prayed that his son would heal completely from that accident. He so he prayed and nothing happened. He placed all his hope in that outcome that his son should walk again, but it didn't happen. And his son remained partially disabled. And the king was heartbroken because he felt his creator had let him down. That the divine intervention had failed. It didn't come. So he lamented to his guardian angel, Luminous says, who is one of us, how he felt betrayed. And his angel replied that divine intervention had actually occurred, just not the way the king had crafted the events he had hoped for. I don't see it, the king said to the angel. My son still cannot walk. The guardian angel said divine intervention does not mean compliance with events that you plan for. Compliance with events that you plan for. It means delivery of the best events for resolution of your challenges. That's what divine intervention gives you. And this requires patience and gratitude for each outcome that follows when you hope for something. A few months later, the king's land was attacked and his army was dispatched to the battlefield. Normally his son, the prince, would have led the charge. But this time the first general led the charge because the prince could not walk. They lost the battle and the first general was executed in the battlefield. And the king said to the guardian angel, thank God my son wasn't in the battlefield today or he would have been executed. Well, the guardian angel said, divine intervention saved your son. It delivered to you a better outcome than what you had hoped for. Your son remained behind in the castle and masterminded the defense of your castle. And he's a great strategist and he masterminded the defense and he frustrated and wore down the invaders who gave up in the winter and returned to their homeland because they could not break through. So divine intervention enabled you to retain your kingdom and have your son, your heir, who will succeed you. So Lumina said, let me wrap this up for you here because I want you to remember and understand these things about hope. So let me summarize what I have taught you today. He said, number one, when you draw upon the higher level of your beings from the intellect and beyond, you are engaging with the source of your creation. That is your torch, your life force, your infinite intelligence. That is your torch. Use it. Number two, he said, hope is invocation of divine intervention. The word divine refers to the most elevated state of your being. The word intervention represents a power of facilitation. Not all hopes are facilitated the way they were envisaged because divine intervention does not mean compliance with events that you plan for. Divine intervention delivers the best events that enable resolution of all your challenges. And this requires patience and gratitude for each outcome that follows after you place your hope in something. So my dear friends, today we have learned something very deep and profound from Cyrus and Luminous, that hope is the invocation of divine intervention. It's a very powerful process. It's a great power that we all possess. This makes hope one of the most powerful gifts that resides within us. So let us work with our torch. Let us make it shine brighter by renewing the strength of our faith in the higher and exalted levels of our being. And then draw upon the power of hope and prayer, both of which are extremely powerful invocations to help us and all our fellow beings navigate our ways through these ever challenging times. In sharing hope, today's event, we engage with the power of hope and prayer
for the betterment of our fellow beings and for all creation. This is why today I wanted to take this time and focus on spiritual dimension of hope. 